Do you have a honeydew list? Do you make one yourself? Does someone else keep adding to it? Where do you put it? Is it a piece of paper stuck to the fridge? Take a step up with this do-it-yourself honeydew chalkboard. It's super easy to make. And I'm gonna show you some of the behind the scenes thought process that went into creating this functional piece of art. I'm Joe Rotella, this is Create and Craft. Stay tuned for behind the scenes of how to make a honeydew chalkboard list for your home. I find that a lot of my projects start out with a simple idea and then they grow and morph and change and that's exactly what happened with this honeydew chalkboard. It all started when I was introduced to these diamond art kits by Leisure Arts. Now if you're not familiar with these, it's pretty amazing. It starts out as a piece of canvas that has a design pre-printed on it that has an adhesive on top of that design. And you get these diamond gems and you take a little stylus with wax on the end and you apply each one until you finish the design. The end result is incredibly sparkly and that's because each one of these diamond gems has 13 facets. So at first I thought, I don't know about this. Then I started doing it and it actually becomes quite meditative to put these gems on one by one by one. When I was done, I had this really cool bee and then I thought, well now what am I gonna do with this bee? Since it is on fabric, some people will put it on the back of a jacket or put it on a pillow, but you know, that's just not my thing. I want something 3D, home deck, functional. So I thought, well, what do I do with the bee? Well, it'd be cool if the bee was cut out. So I cut it out and you end up with a flat bee. Well, a flat bee is just not gonna cut it for me. It needs to look like a bee, it has to have shape. Well, in comes this. Take the back of that bee and coat it with Mod Podge Stiffy. And then you build an armature. This is just aluminum foil covered with saran wrap. And that way the finished thing you can peel off if it sticks to this paper at all. Lay it on top and let it dry. When you're done, look at this. We have a 3D bee where the wings are actually bent, the antenna are sticking up. So I thought, well, that's just perfect. Now I have a bee. What am I gonna do with the bee? Well, a bee should be on a honeycomb. So that set me down the path of how do I make a honeycomb? And there's several options on how you could do that. I chose to make one out of quarter inch thick wood. And I used Proxon's benchtop tools, cause you know, I'm like the tool guy. I love my Proxon tools. This is a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it. In order to get these interior cuts, you drill a small pilot hole in the corner of each of these cells. And I think there's 33 of them. Then you can take out the blade, put the blade through the hole, reattach it, cut out the cell. Then take the blade out, move to the next one. Go all the way around like that. If you don't wanna do that, cut them on a scan and cut. Just use a thick chipboard, and you might even wanna cut it twice and glue the two pieces together to give you more substance uh, and a little bit more thickness. Or you could cut it out with foam core by hand with a craft knife, but that would be a lot of work. So now I had a honeycomb. I thought, well, what am I gonna do with the honeycomb? So the first thought was to just put it on top of a frame. So I found this picture frame at the thrift store for $1.91. And you know, that's not bad, that would be pretty cool. But then I thought, I don't really know what picture I would put inside. Hey, how about a chalkboard? That's black, goes with the bee color. And you know, it's pretty cool and easy to make a chalkboard with Style Tech Crafts chalkboard vinyl. So this is kind of amazing to me. This is vinyl that you could cut out in shapes and put anywhere, but it's chalkboard material. So you can write on it with a piece of chalk. Well, if I put this on a piece of wood, it's gonna show every little groove in that wood underneath because vinyl's so thin. So I thought, well, now I have a need or a use for the glass that came inside the frame. Just apply the vinyl to the glass. You're gonna get a nice hard surface that's totally smooth. Well, what am I gonna do with that piece of glass? How am I gonna sandwich that behind my honeycomb? Well, again, we could just stick this on top of the frame. I decided to build this layered approach. So this is eighth of an inch Baltic perch that I cut on the Proxon scroll saw. I've got a second layer here that really is just a frame. It's gonna sit on top and my piece of glass will nestle right in there covered with the StyleTech chalkboard vinyl. And then this piece will go on top. So now I thought, well, that's pretty cool. I have a honeycomb, I have a chalkboard, I'll stick the bee on here somewhere. But you know, a honeycomb should be a golden rich yellow. 
and I contrast that with black. I like a real flat matte black. This is chalkboard paint, Black Noir from Plaid, one of my favorite products to work with. So I painted all the edges with the black, the outside edges, the edges inside the cells, and then I thought I could paint the inside of the cells gold, and Plaid has a beautiful brushed metal gold. Well, that'll work, except right here, where the frame has a line, because you're gonna see the glass and the line, and you're gonna have a straight line all the way around. So I thought, well, what can I do then? Check this out. This is foiled paper by Rinia, and it comes in all sorts of beautiful colors. It comes in just a solid finish, like this gold, and then this is kind of a starburst, I'd call it. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. I can cut that out on the Brother Scan and Cut. So I cut out little hexagons, and the thought was I can just lay the hexagon right inside the cell, and now I actually have some depth, right? A quarter inch deep. But that's not gonna work where the seam is because the foil is gonna show the transition from wood to glass. Well, back to the scroll saw, cut out 33 pieces of wood, put the foil on top, and now you drop in a wood piece. Now that's eighth of an inch wood. So now I have two different thicknesses and depths. I have quarter inch deep honeycomb cells and I have eighth inch deep because a quarter inch minus the eighth of the wood. How do you attach the foiled paper to the wood? Well, I've got a solution for that. It's Mod Podge Ultra. This is a spray adhesive, comes in matte and gloss. And all I did was take the wood cutouts, give them a blast, one spray really, and then put the foil paper on top. And if the foil doesn't exactly match the lines of your cutout, because cutting these perfectly is tough, just take a piece of sandpaper or an emery board, a nail file. You always want to work down from the paper to the wood, down. Never back up because you'll pull the paper up. Go down a couple strokes all the way around. This is going to exactly fit the edge of the wood and it's going to drop in here just perfectly. Well, that was working out pretty well. And then I thought, well, if I've got a chalkboard, I should label it. What am I going to label it with? I could write it, but my handwriting's not very good back to the Brother Scan and Cut and vinyl from Style Tech Crafts. This is gold vinyl, and I don't know if you can tell how fine that can cut, but look at my fingernail compared to the thickness of that letter in Busy B. So I thought, well, I could put Busy B right on top here, and this is how busy I am, it's my to-do list, but I really like Honeydew, and that font should remind you of a little bear with his honeypot. So, now I've got a label going on there. I don't want the mirror to, or the glass to shimmy at all, so I'm gonna attach that to the back frame with some double-sided adhesive tape. Score tape is my favorite, my go-to for a dry adhesive. And then the last thing is, well, how am I gonna put the B on there? So I got my B, and you can see with the Mod Podge Diffy, he's dried and he's got some wings. But if I put him too flat, you know, the wings kinda hit, and I, I kinda want him up in the air a little bit. So thank goodness for yard sales and all the junk we collected them. Look at this. This is a spool of thread, right? An old spool of thread. Well, if we paint that and stick that on top, and we could probably use that Mod Podge Ultra and a little wood dome. This was just a little wood toy part. Now I've got a curved surface. It'll fit right under the body of my B, and it's going to lift that B up about an inch off the surface of the chalkboard. So now I have lots of dimension going on, right? You've got the B at the highest level and then some space and the honeycomb, and the honeycomb has two different layers, eighth of an inch thick, quarter of an inch thick, foiled paper in some, patterned in some, solid in some, brushed metal gold in others. So we've got a lot of textures, we've got a lot of colors going on or shades, we've got a lot of depth. Well, where am I gonna put the chalk? So that was the last thing, and you know, I'm fussy and like these details. How about a Scrabble tile tray? So we cut this with the Proxon scroll saw and glue it to the base, and now I have the perfect place to rest my piece of chalk. So this all started with a diamond art kit from Leisure Arts, turned out to be a B, a 3db, a 3db on a chalkboard, on a chalkboard with a label, on a chalkboard with a label with a honeycomb, with foil. It was really fun to make and I got to use a ton of tools, which I love. I hope you'll think about how you can take something that starts even as a kit and turn it into something else. Even if you just add it to a frame, 
sew it to a pillow, put it on a jacket. And when we talk about mixed media, you know, it's a lot more than just painting and stamping. For me, it's wood and spare parts and foiled paper and glass and tools. It's a cutting machine, electronic cutting machine, a scroll saw, uh, stiffy and, and mediums and glues and paints. And, you know, it all starts with something easy and it just grows and grows and grows. I want to know what you're making. What project did you start that just grew and grew and grew? I'm Joe Rotella from Create and Craft. Check out my other videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel, visit my website. See you in the studio. Happy crafting.